It has been great two days until now, I can say, and I know it is almost an hour after lunch. Some people are jet lagged. We talked about sleep. We had 80 slides coming by. So now we're going to shift pace a little bit. So I first want you to join me in an international exercise. It's called the International Clapping Massage. So I want you all to raise. Yes, so you put forward your right hand and your left hand is like a little clapping machine and you, so you start here with your hand and clap up. Yes, and down you go back. And then the other hand, to up, up, and down, yeah. So then we all bend over and go to the feet. Start, you can do two together, three, four, yes. And the back side. Good, and then we softly grab this little lunge up, softly. And then we finish softly with a little bit on the head, don't slap too hard. And then we all take a deep breath and out. And then we're fresh to listen to me. So sit down. Good. So I will bring together a little bit the exercise people who are uh, with a big crowd here and also the cardiac, uh, more cardiac oriented uh, uh, persons do, who do knowledge uh, our research in that. And uh, I'm a little short of breath. I have no heart failure, but it's... <laughs> um, but, um, so I will talk about heart fail exercise and heart failure. Yes, we can. And um, I will just share with you where I come from. I come from Sweden. It's up in the north. And uh, this is like close to Stockholm. I'll just tell you here is Stockholm. Here is Lane Shopping. And uh, nowadays we have a winter, um, and I'll show you a picture later. But Simon gave me this interesting talk, uh, talk extra gaming in heart failure patients. Yes, we can. And I actually have this big board, which we sometimes use for promotional activities. Having the same title, we have our own little line of products. We have a mug, you can see, for the coffee. We have t-shirts. So we have our little we, yeah, heart value we study uh, products, which you can order with me after the lecture if you're interested. Anyway, I would like to show you a very short clip of a video to introduce you a little bit in the other kind of people I work with than you maybe saw yesterday, Exergaming. Gaming. I'll just try to help, sorry. Might need some help to open this thing. Oh, here. Yeah. It worked before. I think. Yeah. Swedish. In Vardanus, has had a heart condition for four years and the limitations that go with it. But thanks largely to this bowling game, he has been able to stay reasonably active and has improved both his physical and his mental health. Self-care, even what, is very important for the patients and a part of this uh, self-care is being physically active. If we do this uh, gaming, we gaming, People can play at the level they want to play, and people can also play inside, they can play with the wife or the grandchildren. This game was introduced in conjunction with research in nursing science at the Faculty of Health Sciences in a pilot study with some 30 patients from a hospital in Norshire. What we were looking for if patients don't 
only like it and have fun, but if they actually also improve their daily activities, because that's what, what we want them to do, to be more physically active. So 53% uh, of the patients actually increased the number of meters walked in six minutes. We don't want them to do only we uh, and then do nothing anymore. It should be like the first startup and then to do feel more comfortable to go to the shop and do their own shopping again. Ingvar and his wife Mona have made the game a part of their daily routine. Yeah, they betyder att vi får lite mot två månader innan ja. Och vi hjälper varandra. Vi, om till exempel vi är trötta någon morgon och Ingvar säger jag vill inte spela idag. Ja. Då säger jag det är att vi ska spela. Och då kör vi. And this activity means that Ingvar can keep working. Vår nyräkning är att stå i mycket in att vi får från det jag har det. Men för att kunna klara av det så måste man ju göra det något själv. Jag märker ju när vi går från garaget till jobbet. När vi inte har spelat någon period, då vill han gärna stanna inte när vi har gått ungefär en tio minuter och få oss lite grann. Men när vi har börjat att spela, då går han. Så att det, är, det är lite mot honom där också. Roughly 200,000 people in Sweden. So now I need to go back to the presentation. I just hope I can do that. Just see. So that was an example on how we use the extra gaming. And you, as you can see, like Trina yesterday showed young people in high intensity extra gaming. We use it in a little different pace and you, you, you see the patients we work with every day that they cannot do so much. But this patient um, enjoyed the extra gaming very much. So, why is it so important? And we heard yesterday a lot about you know, being active and, and we all have to be more active, the relationship between exercise and quality of life. Uh, but as we all know, it is difficult to stay active. Uh, and in chronic disease, the adherence to activity is quite low. If, if you can see here, like 30 to 50 percent. And especially for cardiac patients, it is a challenge also to go to a gym or maybe even go to a rehabilitation program or do exercises by themselves individually. And these are some barriers to exercise for all of us. And I think we recognize some of them. We're too busy, we're too lazy. Um, I don't really enjoy doing exercise or sweating. Uh, but there's also external barriers, like we have no transportation to go maybe to a specific gym. Uh, the weather uh, in Sweden now, I, when I left, it was still snow. It was very slippery because we have the ice and then the snow on top. So a lot of people don't want to go out. Uh, and here you have very hot weather, but also very cold, I know. Um, so there's a lot of external barriers for people to be active. And this is for all of us. But then if we look at heart failure patients, they have often symptoms, they might have medication that uh, does not uh, make it easy to exercise, to go to a gym if you have diuretics and you have to pee all the time. Um, and also some people have a lot of comorbidity, uh, mood disorders, etc. So we were thinking maybe there is a role for extra gaming. Um, and that is because we think if you have extra gaming, you could help people to get used to activities again, to um, feel more able, so to be more self-efficacious to, to, to do games, so really believe that I can do it again, to improve health behaviors and then also to improve health. So we first set out to do a literature review because we thought, well, maybe there is already done something. So we did this scoping review on extra gaming in uh, older adults. And we actually found no studies. Or there was one study with a, a bike in, uh, in a Japanese uh, group. But there were no studies on extra gaming, for example, with we in heart uh, patients. Uh, but we saw that they are used in healthcare. Uh, they, are, they are used in stroke rehabilitation, uh, Parkinson, MS, uh, but also to train motor function, so to train one limb. Uh, and we also learned that it increased socialization. 
And what we learned from that review, the scoping review, there are several platforms, and, and you know several of them. The Xbox, where they have also the bowling and tennis, etc. Cyber walking, uh, cyber cycling, where you can actually uh, ride the bike in a virtual environment through your, maybe your old neighborhood where you grew up. Uh, and the Wii, and there is the Dance Dance Revolution. There are several of these games. Uh, and actually, also from that review, we learned that there is a difference, and you can think about that. If you do like we, or if you do like boxing, there you have different uh, output and, and meds. So, but you can really see that compared to rest, you can increase your heart rate, you can uh, increase outcomes from field to, ma uh, to max with extra gaming. So from that, re that, that review, we, we saw that it is safe and feasible in an older population, and they were not all cardiac patients, or, or, only very few. You have more ex uh, energy expenditure compared to rest. It improved pe people's balance, but also improved cognitive function, uh, less depressive symptoms, improved quality of life, and feel more connected to other family members. And that was from a general older population with or without disease. So we said, if this is the literature until now, let's do a pilot study. So, and that is what the video was about. So we did a pilot study where we ha invited people to the hospital, do an introduction session in the hospital with our instructor. You can see her here, Adriana, with the black uh, clothes. And she instructed the patients, and we made sure that every patient had a success experience during that instruction. Then we went home to the patients, installed the Wii, made sure it you know, was connected to their TV and, and, and all functioned well. We also looked at safety, and here you can see an example of that we needed the safety with the loose carpet, etc. So we made sure that people could play the Wii without hip, hitting lamps and you know, fall tripping on, on carpets. And then we gave an instruction how often they should play and we had like safety guidelines. From that pilot study we saw, and it was in only in 32 patients, but still we saw it was safe and feasible. It increased the exercise capacity, which we measured by the six minute walk in, in more than half of the patients. Uh, but we also saw that if people have more comorbidity, logically they had more uh, difficulty to improve their six minute walk test. And what we also saw is that there was a good adherence to playing advice. People really followed the 20, 30, 40 minutes advices. And uh, we even saw we gave the advice and people played more than the advice. So that was, that's sort of exceptional probably in, in the ex exercise advices. So um, we saw that people played around 28 minutes while well, we said they should play 20. Uh, but then we said, well, this is the pilot, what now? So the next step, we're in the middle of an, an RCT where people are randomized to have uh, the heart failure we at home, uh, play, the, play for three months, and we have also a motivational uh, um, support only call uh, control group because we call the people every uh, two weeks in the beginning uh, to say, uh, is it okay, does the we work, do we have any problems? But we also give the same like motivational support to people who do not have the we, and we would just say, do you do some exercises, are you active, etc. So we have an international study in Sweden, Italy, Israel, Netherlands, Germany, and the United States. And these are the objectives, so we would like to see if, if people have a heart failure we at home and get instruction, do they have an improved exercise capacity and daily activity, and we also look at secondary out outcomes like mortality, readmission, and quality of life. We have a, the traditional inclusion-exclusion criteria, but I think what's nice to know, know if you see like the exclusion criteria, they're not mostly in the heart failure trials, that people had to be able to to see the TV, or they have to be able to stand up. So we had some extra exclusion criteria there. Like, I, like in the pilot, we have an introduction session, we have an installation at home, which is vital in our study. Uh, we have the follow-up, and we also, they can call our instructor if they have problems with the Wii. If they have heart failure symptoms, they should call the heart failure clinic, of course. And we have a control group. 
So just like this is the same introduction session as in the, in the pilot. And what are we looking for? We are looking for more, we, we, we clustered it around themes, so on. Do they really do more? Can they walk further in six minutes in uh, a further distance? Look at things like self-care, but also we look at cost. Does it, because the we is not so expensive, but we have to send in an instructor, we have to be uh, available for them. And we also are very interesting, I would love to talk about that once a little bit longer, about patient experiences. How do they really play with we? We published our design paper. And just to go back a little bit, because we talked about outcomes, uh, the six minute walk we have, so people will walk for six minutes and we measure how far they walk. But we also have muscle function tests because we said it's not only about how far people can walk, but also do they have better uh, muscle function uh, after playing with the Wii. So this was the 31st of January, uh, just before I, or a little bit before I came here, and then we had our 600 patients in. So uh, we will not make it until the hot, uh, to the hotline session because we have it's you know this huge database and all the data in from all the countries. But uh, we finished our in inclusion. Um, and just to round up, like two more minutes, it's a, a case study that I, we also published actually about a patient that has uh, heart failure um, and then was in the pilot also and did the WEE study. He had heart failure, no comorbidities, uh, mild symptoms, uh, was able to play very well. And then we tracked also his activity and here you can see his activity monitor over time, which slowly increases. And that is, of course, the, 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 our challenge with the elderly heart failure patients. We cannot expect an increase of 200% in two days. We have to take it very slow. So this patient actually slowly increased his activities over time. And here it's so nice you can see actually with this activity monitor what happens. Uh, people do more, so they have a peak but also you could see here the 21st of June in Sweden is midsummer day where everybody just sits and the only movement they do is like this, take in alcohol and that does not really reflect the activity monitor. But it's, you know, cool to look at this uh, data and see how people can improve their activity. One more thing we are now uh, uh, developing is we have a, we call it virtual bowling competition, where we actually bring cardiac patients together and they bowl against uh, their team against another city in Sweden, where we try to also get the socializing concept a little bit more. So to conclude, uh, I think extra, extra gaming could probably be used, but we have to really see the results of our trial to improve health and quality of life. And what we think, it's often, it can be a first step to become more active, to return to activity. Uh, it can be used as tra training, but then of course we come to the question, can we really get the heart rate up and the activity up to really improve outcomes with a Wii game computer or another extra game? Uh, so I think it should be seen in future to sort of adding to existing advices and programs. And it can be used to motivate and to really convince people, yes, you can bowl standing up for one hour without getting chest pain. So maybe you can even go to the shop tomorrow to do same sort of activities. So having said that, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>